Today's finally the day we're going to bolt this custom loop together. Stay tuned. And we're finally on the fifth video in this series where we finally start to bolt this stuff together. So let me go over some of the parts that we're using real quick. Some of these you've already seen and some of these you haven't. We've already seen the Alpha Cool ST30 radiator as well as EK's Quantum Volume Flat Reservoir. And we're also going to be using EK's Velocity CPU block as well as Primo Chill's LRT tubing. And we've got a whole bunch of fittings that we got to bolt together. So without further ado, let's get to putting this thing together. We start with removing the original fans so we can make room for the radiator. If you can, just move the fans off to the side because we're going to be putting them right back into place in a moment. Your radiator placement may be different than mine, but while you're doing it, just make sure to be gentle and take your time so you don't get any scratches in the finish. This is an important tip. When installing the radiator, use the small 5mm screws to hold the radiator in place while you install one of the fans. Then remove the 5mm screws in order to install the other fan. This is the reason why we installed the 5mm screws before. This will make installing the screws for the fan a lot easier, and once the fan is installed, it should hold the radiator in place so we can remove the 5mm screws and then install the other fan. Now we can remove the small temporary screws that we installed originally to make room for the second fan. When tightening the screws holding the fan in place, these don't have to be torqued down really tight. They just need to be snug enough to hold the fans in place. Now that the radiator is installed, admire your work and make sure you didn't make any mistakes. Now it's time to remove your original CPU cooler to make room for the CPU water block. This cooler was a pain to remove, but it's primarily because I was doing it with the system upright so I could film it. If you can, I would lay the system down on its side and it would make this job a lot easier. I've sped this part up so you don't have to share my pain. I'm doing this on an AMD AM4 platform, so the motherboard has the original plastic clips that hold some heat sinks down. If these are still installed on your system, it's time to remove them now. Don't 
Don't forget to remove the CPU cooler backplate. If your case gives you access, then it makes the job a lot easier. If it doesn't, you'll have to remove the motherboard to get it out. The Waterbach retaining mechanism comes with some larger standoffs and some shorter standoffs. You're going to want to use the longer ones and make sure you use a nylon washer between the standoff and the motherboard. Position the backplate into place and screw the standoff through the front of the motherboard. Repeat this step for all four standoffs. On the AM4 platform, it's important to use the rubber gasket between the back plate and the bottom of the motherboard, but refer to EK's instructions for your specific platform. Now clean off the thermal paste from the processor. I use a clean shop towel with Goo Gone, a method I've used for years and have had really good luck with. Now install the thermal paste. I use a pea-sized blob in the middle of the heat spreader, but this is a point of contention, so I may do a video in the future testing different types of applications. Now it's time to install the water block. I clocked the top plate off camera in order to accommodate my tubing orientation. Make sure you take this into account because the water flow through the block is directional. Now drop the springs in place included in the kit and install the thumb screws. These should be installed in a alternating clock pattern. Tighten them all the way down by hand, alternating from corner to corner. Only turn them a few rotations as you're alternating in order to apply even pressure to the processor. If your water block has RGB like mine does, route the RGB cable to where you want it to go. I'm installing the reservoir into the rear fan location, so I'm routing the RGB lines through the same hole that the CPU power comes through. To secure the reservoir, use the included Allen screws and washers that come with the kit. Be careful lining up these screws because you're going to be screwing into acrylic and you don't want to cross thread it. Make sure you don't over tighten these screws because you could strip the acrylic. The reservoir came out pretty good. You can't even tell that we installed an RGB strip around it in another video. Here I'm measuring the hose from the CPU block to the reservoir. When you make your measurements, it's okay to go a little bit long. It's always easy to fine tune it later. Now install your fitting and test fit the hose. This is where you can make any fine adjustments to the length of the hose. I cut the hose with a pair of wire cutters. Make sure when you cut the hose, 
you're cutting it extremely straight. Here I install the other fitting into the reservoir and push the hose over the barb. Make sure you push the hose all the way onto the barb fitting. Now screw the compression ring all the way down. Sorry about the focus in this section, it didn't come out great. Now I'm installing the hose from the outlet on the radiator to the CPU block in the same way we did before. Make sure you put the compression ring on the hose before you push the hose over the barb because if you forget, you'll have to take the hose off and it's not easy. I intentionally made this hose long in order to accommodate removal of the ram if I ever needed to. It's not a bad idea to think about future maintenance when you're planning out your loop. To install these fittings, push the hose over the barb all the way down to the bottom of the barb, and then screw the compression ring over the top of the hose, keeping it in place. This hose here literally took me 20 minutes to install. Eventually, I had to turn off the camera and move the case in order to install it. Here I'm installing the other side of the hose to the pump. This is the hose that will feed the radiator. I have a lot of fittings coming off the pump to accommodate my drain valve, so I made sure to support these while I was pushing the hose onto the barb fitting so not to damage the pump housing. Make sure you tighten these compression rings all the way down. They may seem tight at first, but they need to be screwed all the way down to the fitting. Now I am measuring the last hose that goes from the reservoir to the pump. Make sure that you plan your loop ahead of time so that the reservoir is higher than the pump.
I'm installing a 90 degree swivel on each end of this hose to make it easily removable to accommodate removing the graphics card. In order to clock each 90 to be pointing in the correct orientation, I leave one end of the hose loose so I could spin the hose on the barb fitting until I have the right orientation. Now that the orientation is correct, I can install the final hose. Now go through and make sure all your fittings are tight. This is the best time to do it when water isn't spraying everywhere. And there we go, the loop is now done. Time to take a second to admire it. Now that we have the loop together, the next step is to pressure test the system and to fill it full of fluid. But for that, you're going to have to wait for the next episode in the series. If this kind of content interests you, then please subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. And don't forget to like this video. It really does help. Thanks again.